In this video I'll show you a few different ways how to capture the ISS or International Space Station doing a transit of the Moon or the Sun. We will start with how to get alerts when your location is due for such an event and different ways how to configure the predictions and simulate the pass in order to plan your filming session. Finally, you will see how a recent borderline event was missed in one location but seen in another, showing you which online and software sources are the most reliable to trust. As can be seen from the links at the end of this video, I managed to record the ISS transiting the moon a few times already, both sunlit and when in Earth's shadow. I also want to challenge all those flat earthers and conspiracy theorists who commented fake on my previous videos. Now that you have all the knowledge to view this phenomena yourself, to get off your sofas and do some real observations instead of your usual fake research. ISS transits from any location happen very rarely, so the best is to subscribe to an email or iCalendar alert service such as calsky.com. To set up to receive alerts, click on free registration login or try out our email alert manager where you will set up your site, time zone, user level, etc. In the email alert manager, you will select what events you want to receive alerts for. Ensure that you tick number 4, a weekly ISS, sun, moon, planets, stars, crossings. Such an alert and follow-up observations will be shown later. A very useful and easy to use online prediction service is transitfinder.com. By the way, all the links are in the description below. There are several options to select your location. After selecting the prediction period and how far you are prepared to travel, hit calculate. Visibility strips are then shown on an interactive map. I'll show you an actual observation just now. A cell phone app that works very similar to transitfinder.com is available for Android called ISS Transit Prediction. The free version is all you need to do your own predictions showing the visibility strip relative to your home location. Unfortunately, the old phone that I'm currently using cannot run this app. So on the 1st of May 2018, I received an email alert from Calsky telling me that ISS will cross the disk of the moon. The map showed that my house is close to the center line. It was only later that I saw the transit duration is 0.06 seconds, meaning ISS will just do a grazing pass of the moon's edge. I was fooled by this prediction and only afterwards realized that it was for the center line. I was further fooled by heavensabove.com suggesting ISS is doing a lunar transit on its wide angle star map. In its defense, this is not what heavens above is used for normally. From past experience, I knew that Stellarium is very accurate. This amazingly realistic planetarium program can be downloaded for free from stellarium.org. To configure it to do satellite predictions, click on the spanner to open the configuration window. Then select the Plugins tab, click on Satellites, and then on Configure. From the Sources tab, select Visual.text. Then go to the Settings tab and click Update Now to get the latest orbital elements for ISS and other satellites. To configure Stellarium for your location, click on the Location Window button and select your site. Finally, to view satellites, click on the Satellite Hints icon at the bottom. As can be seen, Stellarium predicted that ISS will just miss the moon as seen from my home. To get another opinion, I ran transitfinder.com, which also indicated that my location is right on the edge of the visibility strip. If I were to move my location by 5.8 kilometers, ISS would transit over the center of the moon's disk. But Transit Finder showed something else. It showed that the visibility strip traverses most of Cape Town's major suburbs. So with about two hours to go, I sent out an alert message to our astronomy WhatsApp group. I targeted one person in particular. My friend Johan Leroux's house was well placed and he is suitably equipped to record the event. He was only 2.7 kilometers from the center line and would see ISS cross the lunar disk in one second, 0.99 seconds to be exact. It was amazing how well predictions agreed with what was observed. Johan recorded at 60 frames per second and he captured ISS in 59 frames. Johan's Canon SX68C has amazing zoom capability, an excellent image stabilizer and can take full HD video.
He did not bother with a telescope, but video directly on camera. In real time, it is quick. If you blink, you miss it. Slow down, it almost looks like ISS was tumbling. This is due to atmospheric turbulence, or what astronomers call seeing, and slight camera shake. This would have been the result better if you hadn't used this telescope. There are a few options to record ISS using a telescope. Modern cell phones are actually up to the task these days. For this, the cell phone camera effectively looks into the eyepiece, just as your eye would. It's very difficult to hold the phone by hand, so a purpose-made bracket is ideal, such as this 3D printed one, developed by one of our students at work. See its Thingiverse link below. A camcoder can also be mounted to look afocally into the telescope eyepiece, as shown in my previous videos. A DSLR can also be used, mounted directly on the telescope, such that the telescope effectively becomes its lens. The telescope's eyepiece and camera lens are removed. The camera mounts in the draw tube using a special T-ring adapter, T stands for telescope, available online and from astronomy or photographic stores. Sure that your video is set to the highest frame rate and focus on a bright star. Either way, start the video recording a good 2 minutes or so before the predicted time and if you don't see the transit, keep recording for about 2 minutes afterwards. Avoid moving the telescope during the expected time of the transit. As could have been expected, no transit was seen from my location. I literally scrutinized my video frame by frame to see if the Kalsky predicted 0.06 seconds transit was not perhaps registered in one or two frames, but saw nothing. It must have passed very close to the limb of the moon, but since it was in the Earth's shadow, it was invisible. I hope this video gives you enough information to go and try this at home. Please send us links to your successes. Thank you.